Japan's use of mini-subs in World War II is well known. Lesser known is the role played by the British XE-class mini-subs operating in the Pacific. HMS Bonaventure, command ship for the newly formed 14th Submarine Flotilla, arrived in Australia in April 1945 with six XC-class midget submarines on board. The XEs were an improved version of the X-class midgets that had been used in the attack on the German battleship Tirpitz. The flotilla's commanding officer, Captain William Fell, Royal Navy, was under the command of the U.S. 7th Fleet. Captain Fell found the attitude of the U.S. Navy to be discouraging and skeptical. The use of midget submarines in any useful mission was not looked upon with much enthusiasm. Contrary to the U.S. Navy's expectations, the XEs would go on to prove their value by carrying out three successful missions against the Japanese. The XEs were a class of midget submarines built for the Royal Navy during 1943 and 44. Known individually as X-Craft, they were meant to be towed to their intended area of operations by a full-sized mother submarine, usually one of the T-Class or S-Class, with a passage crew on board. Upon reaching the operating area, the operational crew transferred from the towing submarine to the X-Craft by dinghy, and the passage crew came back with the dinghy to the towing submarine. Once the operation was over, the X-Craft would rendezvous with the towing submarine and be towed home. The XEs had a length of 16 meters and a beam of 1.75 meters with a displacement of about 30 tons. They carried a crew of four, typically a lieutenant in command with a sub-lieutenant as deputy, an engine room technician in charge of the mechanical side, and a seaman or leading seaman. At least one of them was qualified as a diver. They carried two side charges, each containing two tons of amatol explosive, about six nine kilogram limpet mines, which were attached to the target magnetically by the diver. Range was limited primarily by the endurance of the crew, but was up to 14 days or 2,000 kilometers after suitable training. The range of the X-Craft itself was 1,100 kilometers surfaced at 6.5 knots or 150 kilometers at two knots submerged. The flotilla was almost disbanded in May 1945, as no suitable missions could be found. But in early June, Captain Fell identified three worthwhile operations. Operations Foil, Sabre, and Struggle. Operation Foil aimed to cut telegraph cables in the Lama Channel off Hong Kong, and Operation Sabre intended to cut telegraph cables at Cape St. Jacques. These operations would isolate Singapore from Japan just before an invasion by a joint force. The American Navy reluctantly agreed to the plan since these cables were vital to Japanese signal security as radio signals could be deciphered by U.S. codebreakers. The third operation was Operation Struggle. Two XEs were to attack two Japanese cruisers in the Singapore Strait where they were acting as guard ships to that most important anchorage. Bonaventure and her X-Craft carried out extensive training and experiments using an abandoned telegraph cable between Australia and New Guinea. During these exercises, two divers died after suffering oxygen poisoning. On 26 July, the operations began. Each XE carried two divers due to the operating rule that a diver should not spend more than 20 minutes in depths over 10 meters and no more than 10 minutes over 12 meters. Operation Sabre targeted two cables of the Hong Kong to Saigon section of the undersea cable system. Submarine HMS Spearhead towed XC-4 to within 65 kilometers of the Mekong Delta. After being released, XC-4 searched for the telephone cables by using a towed Grapner. XE-4's diver, Sub-Lieutenant K.M. Briggs, used the net cable cutter to sever it. The second cable was soon found as well and was severed by the second diver, Sub-Lieutenant A. Burgius. The two cut cable sections were brought back. XE-4 and Spearhead returned to Labuan on 3 August 1945. Lieutenant Maxwell H. Sheen, Royal Australian Naval Volunteer Reserve, was awarded the American Bronze Star Medal for meritorious achievement as the commanding officer of the midget submarine XE-4. Operation Foil was carried out using HMS Maidstone, based at Subic Bay, Philippines, as the depot ship. HMS Saline towed the XE-5, but the tow failed partway through the journey. XE-5 was able to reach the target under own power. Operating close inshore near Lama Island, working conditions were poor, XC-5 divers having to work in thick mud under the constant threat of oxygen poisoning. 
Despite repeated attempts, it was not completely certain that the cable had in fact been severed, and it was not until after the Japanese surrendered that it was confirmed that XC-5 had succeeded in doing so. XC-5 and Selene returned to Subic Bay on 6 August 1945. In August 1945, XC-1 and XC-3 executed Operation Struggle, a joint attack on Japanese warships operating in Singapore. XC-3's target was the 9,850-ton Japanese cruiser Takeo, lying in the Johor Straits after being damaged in October of 1944 by the U.S. submarine Darter during the Battle of Leyte Gulf. HMS Stygian towed XC-3, and HMS Spark towed XC-1 out of Brunei Bay and across the South China Sea. In the strait where the cruiser was moored, the water was shallow, with depths of 11 to 17 feet, which dropped to under 3 feet at low tide. The Takeo lay across a depression in a seabed 500 feet across, 1,500 feet long, and a little over 5 feet deeper than the surrounding seabed. A hundred feet on either end of her keel lay on the shallow area and the rest over the depression. XC-3 planned to pass over the shallow area and descend into the depression beneath the cruiser. A diver would then attach limpet mines to the enemy vessel. At 0200, XC-3's course took her too far forward of the target and she almost ran into a Japanese Liberty boat full of sailors going ashore. An hour later, XC-3 tried again and this time slid down under the Takeo. Leading seaman McGinnis, the diver, exited through the diving chamber and began the difficult task of attaching six limpet mines to the cruiser. He returned after 30 minutes, but before escaping, the final task was to drop the submarine's explosive charges. Unfortunately, only the port side charge fell away cleanly. Although exhausted from his earlier exertions, McGinnis volunteered to go outside again and, equipped with a large wrench, managed to pry the starboard charge free. The delay now presented a more severe problem. As the tide went down, the cruiser had dropped lower in the water till it rested on top of the XE-3, nearly crushing the midget submarine. After several attempts to free the submarine, XE-3 got free and made its way back to Stygian. XC-1's target was the cruiser Miyoko, lying some two miles further up the straits. XC-1 was delayed by Japanese patrol craft and her captain, realizing that he could not reach Miyoko before the charges laid by XC-3 exploded, added her charges to XC-3's under the Takayo. The resultant explosions blew a 60-foot by 30-foot wide hole in the Takayo, which flooded several compartments below the main deck, including two empty ammunition magazines, the main gun plotting room, and the lower communications Room. The damage was so significant that the Takao would never again be able to play a part in the war. Both XE craft returned safely to Brunei Bay on 4 August 1945. Lieutenant Fraser and leading seaman McGinnis were awarded the Victoria Cross for their gallantry during this operation. Thank you for watching Pacific War Stories. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.